For ACUSports.com, I'm Grant Boone talking men's hoops here with head coach Joe Golding and junior forward Jaron Lewis. Jaron, let's begin with you. Uh, you had a week last week where you beat Lamar on a Wednesday night at home. Then you go to Sam Houston State, and Sam gets the season split with you. Let's start with Wednesday night. Lamar, really talented. Uh, you were tied with him going into that game. How much did the team know about standings and how that game could impact the, the seeding in the tournament? I mean, we knew about it. We all, all the time, we, we try not to pay too much attention to it, but uh, it was in the back of our minds. We knew we were tied with them. Uh, we know they're really talented. We knew it was a big game. Every game is really a big game uh, from here on out. So uh, we knew the importance of it, and we knew we had to have a sense of urgency. And it was really big for us to get that win. You were here when AC was in the midst of struggling against, you know, teams like Sam Houston State and, and, and even Lamar before the last couple of years. What has been the biggest difference in your mind as to why now ACU is, is one of the teams that's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in the league every night? Uh, I think it was just getting the experience under our belts and uh, just going through it. We just needed a chance to go through it. And now we're, we're older. We understand the importance of every game. Uh, we have that experience now. So uh, we're just handling things a lot better, and we're, uh, we're more locked in, and we're getting the job done now. Saturday against Sam Houston State, they get out to a lead uh, at, uh, I think, 11 at the first half. I, I never at any point felt like that, that this team didn't believe it could come back. You cut it to one at one point. Take us through the emotions of that second half. You cut it to one before they finally were able to pull away. Uh, we just knew we had to keep fighting. We have uh, came back from big leads before, so uh, we just knew what we had to do. We've done it before. That was really the message from Coach is keep fighting, keep playing hard, keep competing. And uh, that's all we did. Uh, we just knew it was going to be tough. We knew uh, sweeping any team is really tough, so we knew it was going to be hard to really get that win. But uh, we just tried our best and competed all night, and uh, it just didn't happen in our favor. Well, you wound up with your fifth double-double of the season. And, Coach, you told me before the season started you thought he was an all-conference player, and he's done nothing to, to disprove any of that, has he? No, absolutely not. He's, uh, he's really grown up in our program. I'm extremely proud of him. You know, the honor he received the other night being a 1,000-point scorer. You know, I think he's the type of kid, uh, his freshman year, he had told you that was uh, something he really wanted, um, and he'd probably talked about it for 20 minutes with you uh, and could probably remember every point. Now, uh, as he sits here as a junior, I think he'd be the first person to thank the locker room, his teammates, and all the opportunities they've given him by passing him the ball or setting screens for him and so that just shows you the growth of Jaron he's just he's an incredible teammate he's a big part of what we're doing in here he's changed our program um, you know it's been a lot of fun to watch him since he was a freshman to a sophomore to now as a junior and uh, there's still great things coming for Jaron you know he's 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 getting better each and every day he's really grown this year as a leader I challenged him I challenged him the other night at Sam Houston I took him out of the locker room by himself and that's just how much I believe in him you know I just think he's uh, he's he's a big big part of what we're doing he's he's grown in so many ways but more than all, any of them it's just leadership you know it's it's uh, uh you know he's got a calm demeanor a lot of people say oh, jaron doesn't have a motor no he's got a great motor he just plays the same way all the time he just he's never too high he's never too low uh and those are the kind of guys you want to build around you know i wasn't like that and, and probably still not you know jaron probably tell you i'm high and i i get low and I, i'm just a passionate person and jaron just stabilizes our whole group for us and uh just really proud of him i, I think he's um He's, he's really changed our program along with a bunch of other guys in that locker room. They gave us a chance when we weren't worth a darn. We had probably had the worst Division One basketball program in the country, uh, and we got out of Texas and started recruiting all over the country to find some dudes that could come here and help us win some games and change our program. So uh, myself and our staff, we owe a lot of gratitude to Jaron and to uh, Jay and, and to, you know, Jelani and um, Tripp and Drake and all those guys that believed in us when we weren't any good. You know, it makes it a lot easier to recruit the Damian Daniels and Clay Gaimans and uh, Joe Pleasance now and the Peyton Ricks and Trey Lennox is from a year ago. Uh, it, it just, um, it's night and day now where our program goes and it has nothing to do with coaching. It has everything to do with that man right there to the right of me uh, and the rest of those guys in that locker room. It was kind of cool that on the night that Jaron gets to a thousand points for his career, Jay Frank did as well. Uh, th this class that you mentioned ha has, has, has taken you from, you know, can we beat a Sam Houston State to trying to sweep them? I mean, you'd won three straight against them and, and now you're, you're coming home saying, well, you got to split. And You've said all along, isn't it? You, you, you protect your home court and, and you steal a win here and there. You've you got three conference road wins this year. Yeah, you know, you got to be able to go 500 or better, I think, on the road to compete for a conference championship, and you got to protect the home floor. And uh, we've played really well on the road this year. Uh, Saturday was no different. We just turned the ball over. Uh, and it's something we've done here lately in the last couple of weeks, and that hasn't been what we've been about all year. We've done a great job, and we got we got to fix that. Uh, you know, I think if we take care of the ball, uh, you know, maybe the outcome down there is different. But even with that, I thought we played really hard. We competed. Uh, yeah, we gave ourselves a chance against a team that's playing really, really well right now. And, uh, you know, we, we got it to one. Um, we had a couple chances at the free throw line to get it, uh, to get it back. And then, 
they hit a late shot clock three that sits there on the rim, it seemed like, for 10 seconds and then decides to go in. And uh, next thing you know, it's a two possession game. So obviously, we had to foul late and make some things happen. But, um, you know, you got to give our guys credit for going on the road against a team that we've beaten three times in a row uh, and, and, and almost beaten them four, you know. And so we're, we're right there. Uh, we got to continue to grind, trust the process, and, and get better. You know, what I'm trying to get our guys to understand is don't look at the standings, don't look at yeah. uh, what's going on, just trust the process. Let's get better every day. Uh, let's worry about taking care of the basketball. Let's worry about continuing to box out. Let's worry about uh, how we're going to defend Nichols and how we're going to score against Nichols. And let's worry about Nichols personnel and put all of our effort into Nichols. And then we'll turn the page after that. And I think our guys, for the most part, have done a good job. I think it's all new for us. Mm -hmm. And so they have a tendency. We, we haven't been through this. They start looking at the standings or looking at KD and looking at everybody, uh, you know, and, and it's our first time through it. And uh, we can't, you know, we got to be a leader as a staff. We, we've been in, in, in a lot of those coaches in, in my, uh, on our staff has uh, been through it before and we have some experience in it and we've got to lead these guys in the right direction and keep them focused on, on what truly matters. You keep winning and the standings will take care yeah, of themselves, won't they? Take care of themselves so long we take care of us. <clears throat> you mentioned Nichols. Here comes the number one team in the league. The Nichols Colonels are, are nine and two. Coach, they are uh, they're number one in field goal percentage. They're number one in field goal defense. They shoot 50%, they hold their opponents to 40%. There's not really anything they don't do well, is there? Yeah, extremely talented. Um, you know, they, they have uh, guys that, uh, they had a bunch of guys sitting out last year, and so this is their one chance at it. And uh, then they had some uh, juniors that are now seniors that they brought back, and they've meshed well. It took them some time in the non-conference, but now they've meshed uh, really well. They're playing at a high, high level. They're extremely tough to defend. I don't think anybody's defended them all year in conference play. They've kind of gotten what they've wanted. Um, you, know, the, um, you know, Stephen F. Uh, obviously took them out of some things and Southeastern made it tough on them, which is why they beat them. Uh, they're, they're really, really good offensively. And then defensively, I think they're good too, and they got great size, so they don't give you anything easy. Um, so, you know, again, broken record, but uh, it is what it is, man. They have extremely good players, and they're very, very well coached. And when you put great players with good coaching and guys are bought into what they're trying to do, um, you, you, you get nine and two, which is what Nichols is. And so, um, you know, they have a lot of seniors, which, again, you and I have talked a lot. You know, seniors win in this league, it seems like. The, the longer we're in this league, uh, you know, it seems like juniors get a taste of it and seniors win. And so we're obviously trying to change that a little bit, you know, with a locker room full of sophomores and juniors and, um, uh, you know, the majority of it, um, you know. So it's uh, it's, it's going to be a tough test. The good thing for us, we're playing at home. Our crowds are getting better. Our, uh, we're so appreciative of our students and our faculty and our alumni uh, for what they've done in the city of Abilene to come out and support our guys. And uh, if, we ever, if we ever needed support, it's here. We got four out of five in the next, you know, at, at home. Um, and our guys need a great push. We need to protect home floor. And uh, we need, we'll need it. We'll need everybody in the stands to really help us get through Nichols. ACU, don't listen to this, ACU's tied for sixth place, six and five in the Southland Conference standings, right in the thick of things, bidding to make it to Katy, Texas for the Southland Conference tournament for the first time. For Coach Golding and Jaron Lewis, I'm Grant Boone for ACUsports.com.